there are things that we have a false balance in. And we spend time talking about, I think it was 12 of the false balances. And uh, thank God that we're allowing the Spirit of God to give us a more sure foundation. Yes. Anybody can incur it. I mean, can I say yes to that? Yes. All right, I know you need a title, so we're going to talk about divine sovereignty and human responsibility. That's a powerful topic. Powerful topic. Powerful. And when I was doing the false balance uh, some months ago, I, I really, st this really kind of, well, during the teaching, you know, sometimes when you're studying the things of the Lord, you can uh, get other things while studying one thing. The Lord is faithful to give you something to strengthen you in the midst of that. I'm going to give you some other thoughts. And in your study, you know, truth is like an onion. And when you start on uh, uncovering one truth, one measure of insight, then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit is quick at something else in the meantime. And you just lay it up. So uh, I've studied this maybe, maybe, ooh, it's been a while. I get so lost in my years now, but it's been a while since I, I really took time to study this. But I'm not going to go the, the theological way. I want to make some real practical statements. Uh, the divine sovereignty of God is a misunderstood topic. I, I really believe that God is sovereign. How many, how many of God is sovereign? Yes. Which means he's supreme authority. Mm -hmm. I believe that. But before we get started, let's go to Ephesians 2. <clears throat> I'm not going to take the theological view. I'm going to do it from a soteriological view, which means a salvation view. A mm -hmm. uh, more applicable view. A more practical view. Okay, instead of trying to get your head stuffed up with concepts and things like that because uh, the true essence of the divine sovereignty and human responsibility is uh, connected to, theologically, to two terms, two, two camps, two movements, Arminianism and Calvinism. So some of you guys don't know nothing about that, but those are the two camps that every church, one or another, have found themselves uh, connected to or believe in some form or some fashion. Uh, without being uh, too complex this morning, uh, uh, th those two camps have uh, historically uh, injected some erroneous concepts as it relates to God. And I'm not going to try to exhaust all that and try to untie that, that thing because it's been in the earth for 1,500 or so. Uh, well, 500 years, but 1,500 years or so. Uh, we've been walk, walking around in a, in, a, in, a, in a quagmire of information, mm -hmm. and everybody's trying to unwind it. And I think unwind, when, I mean, to, to, uh, to discover what God is really intending in the scriptures, and we've complicated the matter by trying to figure out God. Mm -hmm. And God can't be put in our box. There's no way you can, I can say that he's in my theological box. He cannot be placed in a box. Mm -hmm. You know, we can get signposts, we can get certain terms and colloquial terms and understandings and linguistics and stuff like that, but the bottom line is every time we think we got the corner on him, he switch up and go another yeah. route. And, and, and I believe that that's because he, he's past finding in some aspects. I'm not to say that he, he you know, he, I know we say God works in mysterious ways. No, he doesn't. He, you know, he, he works his way. And it's up to us to discover it. So he's not trying to hide himself. He's looking to reveal himself. And only men complicate that whole process. So we're going to Ephesians 2, uh, 8, 9, and 10. And uh, King James, and then we're going to read it in the message. Ephesians 2 and 8. Go ahead. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has wrought before, ordained that we should walk in them. Y'all catch that? What did it say? Huh? God did it by what? His grace, his divine selection, his own approval, his own system of, of approach, and his own favor towards man. God did it, right? And therefore, he pre-appointed some things. He laid out some things. He laid out some steps. Hey, how, how many agree with that? Sure, sure. And therefore, it says, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 
How many know if we get this grace we got received from the Lord was given to us by the Lord? Mm -hmm. So nobody can boast. Mm -hmm. no, regardless of your status, your spiritual pedigree, your academia, you get what I'm saying? Anything he's given to us, we cannot boast in it. But it says in verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. But then verse 9 says, not of works. Am I right? Yeah. But then 10 says there's some good works. Yeah. So there's a dichotomy between two works. Yeah. There's the works that men have produced, yeah. then there's the work that God has established. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about that somewhere along the line we've missed it. We've gotten off, we've been derailed to think that the sovereignty of God is the only thing God expects from us. There's also another side to that coin. And it's the human responsibility point. Because sometimes we left things to, and it, and to God and in actuality it became desolate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rot, ruined, sure. dilapidated. Mm -hmm. Because we felt like if he's the author and the finisher, we'll leave it up to him. And we've become uh, couch potatoes, spiritual couch potatoes, and we sit back and, and we want to watch God work. Yeah. Won't he do it? He's not done it. You know what I'm saying? That's what we, those are the cute things, and they, and they work in certain instances, but it's not necessarily theologically correct. God is looking for us to join forces with him. He's looking for us to get active. To be progressive. You know, sometimes we get prophetic word, we think the prophetic word is just going to come to pass. No, it don't just come to pass. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to fight for it. Sometimes you have to make yourself happy for it. Sometimes you have to get into praise and worship for it. So, you know, it has to be saturated. Even though God is divine and He's giving you insight on what He wants to do, there is still a human responsibility. There is still a human responsibility. Amen? Amen. And I, I, I want the people to hear and understand this now. God is, God is sovereign. He's divine. We're not knocking that. But he's given us an invitation mm -hmm. to co-labor with him. Mm -hmm. To get some things done in the earth. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to respond to that, that, to that beckoning call. That, you know what I'm saying? That, that drawing that he's given. I don't, I don't, anybody... Okay. Let's go to Hebrews 11 and 6. Because we, we sit around here, we try to figure out, well, you know, even in the, in the condition that the earth is in, we try to figure out, well, uh, uh, God's going to fix it all. No, 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 no. Oh, boy, that's going to go. No. He's going to use you, use us, use someone to fix it. Hebrews 11 and 6 says what? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek See, him. See, there's sometimes what they call the theological circle of tension in scriptures. It seems like God be a double negative. He, he, he make a statement, and then the second statement always disqualify the first. They call that tension in scriptures. Don't, don't, I'm, I'm going to bring it down to make it palatable. <laughs> you just see that everybody tense like that. No, I'm not going to. It's not that I'm trying to have a curriculum this morning, but I, I want to just share and show and express through scriptures, and even though it's not enunciated through scriptures, mm -hmm. but in captions, that's what God intended. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have enough witness, because you've got to have witness of the scriptures for me to confirm what I'm saying. Am I right or wrong? Yes, sir. I just can't get up here and be flipping with it. i got to have something to back up my words. Okay? But God has said that he's given us something by grace that we can't boast about. But it's through faith. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So faith is a sovereign act of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. But yet at the same time, it takes human responsibility. Yeah. 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 People say, I got faith. I believe God. God on my side. <laughs> if he be for me, who can be against me? We quote it, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Beast of the field. We, we, think fight, we think every venue in the kingdom is automatic. Every extension of the kingdom is automatic. We think by osmosis it's supposed to show up. It's just supposed to happen. It's just supposed to come. Because I'm a believer. I love the Lord. It's going to show up. See, because we can already talk about signs and wonders and healing. 
And I got to get this. I had to go this way to show you so I can disconnect you from inferior concepts, incomplete perspectives, so that we can have the manifestation. I believe that. I, I believe this house is apostolic. I believe this house is prophetic. I believe this house is unique. I believe this house is autonomous. I believe this house is supposed to have expression on a larger scale because of the technology and the wisdom that's given to this house. Therefore, when we come together as one, I believe there should be manifestation of the greater glory. How many know the manifestation of the greater glory is God? God, I believe that. I believe that church should be explosive. I believe that you should encounter God when you come to the house of God. But the reason why we don't have that encounter is because we've been misinformed or ill-informed. Well, let's dissect this first. Paul penned to the church of Ephesus that Man can't boast in his works. Mm -hmm. Yet he says there are some good works that God has set forth. And man is responsible mm -hmm. for walking out those works. Mm -hmm. But he said that there is works that we can't boast. But then yet at the same time he said there are works that man is responsible for seeking out and searching. Mm -hmm. That God has preset man. Man has been pre-appointed mm -hmm. to works. Man has been pre-appointed to works. Can we agree with that? Yes, so, 